Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I would conclude my little mini-series on natural, traditional, historical sharpening stones. Um, now you may remember from last time, I've got a real fascination with the kind of traditional and historical way of doing things. Um, I really like the idea of kind of picking up a, just a random stone almost um, and using that while out in the field to keep your tools sharp. Um, you know, that's what people would have done. Certainly people like frontiersmen and trappers and these kind of people. You know, you may well have a stone that's been shaped that you would keep in your kit. Um, but obviously if you lost that, you would still need a way of sharpening. Um, from what I understand, some people would have just got done away with, with a, a, a pre-shaped one or, a, or one you had to pay for and would have just used natural stones that have been found in riverbeds and that kind of thing. As I say, I really like that idea and the more research I've been doing, the more I've kind of discovered that you can kind of make these things for yourself and you can make them a bit better than just a pebble you've picked up. Um, and that's by a process called lapping. Um, now essentially lapping is when you take two rocks or one rock and a, an abrasive substance. Um, in this case I'm going to be using sandpaper and I've got a couple of diamond stones here just because that's what I've got. Um, but essentially if you were out in the field back in the you know 1800s, early 1900s and you wanted to try and make a stone better for sharpening you would find a flat surface maybe a cliff face or a big rock with a flat section you would take your stone and you would rub them together maybe applying a little bit of water to, to increase the abrasiveness um, and you would flatten that stone out that's what I'm planning on doing today um, now I will say from the get-go I'm not expecting this to be a quick process so I'm probably going to skip through uh, either fast forward or just cut and come back to some footage later on because I, I get the impression this is going to take a while uh, but what I'll do let me move the camera a bit closer in I'll just show you what it is I've got set up here right then guys so this is my little setup I have got some 80 grit sandpaper a coarse diamond stone and what I think is supposed to be a 200 grit or at least a number 200 diamond stone. Um, and the stones I've got here are just a selection of ones that I've found lying around my garden. Um, this one I know is definitely slate. The reason I know that is because it was on the bag when I bought it. Um, this one I think may be granite, but I'm no expert. Um, and the rest of them I'm unsure. This one feels like it might possibly be sandstone. Um, very well compacted if it is. Um, this one, again, I'm not sure, but it's very, very fine, very, very smooth. Um, whether that's just a process of being in a, a riverbed or something, um, or whether it's just a very tightly grained um, piece of stone, I don't know. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus today on these two. Um, the reason being is that these two seem particularly hard. Um, and I'll probably spend some time on those another time. Um, the slate I may or may not have a go with. I'm not convinced this is going to be great, um, but I don't know, maybe I'll give it a try. But these two, this one here has a particularly flat uh, bottom anyway. Um, this one has a particularly flat top, um, so I think that will do me well. Um, I've also got a little bucket of water down the side, uh, down here. Um, because I've been told uh, during my research that it's good to have these wet when you're trying to abrade them. Um, so I'm going to start off with this sandpaper. I'm not holding out a great deal of hope for this, to be perfectly honest. I think the diamond stones will do better, um, but I'm going to give it a try and see where we get to. Well, I'm not convinced it's much flatter than it started with, so I'm going to quickly move over to one of these diamond stones um, and I'll see how we get on with that. Oh, now that is quite interesting, so hopefully this will pick up on the camera there. You can see those flat spots um, that have come really, really quickly with this diamond stone. Um, so what I think I'm going to do, rather than bore you with speeded up footage of this, um, I am going to cut, I'll do a bit of work on this one as well, maybe the slate. 
um, and I'll just show you a few little shots of me doing this um, and I'll come back when I've made a little bit of progress. Right then guys, so a quick close up of the finished products. Um, this is the one that I think may be sandstone, I could be wrong, but if I get this in the right light, you can kind of see that lovely flat top on there. Um, it was some pretty hard graft, I'll be honest, but I'm really pleased with that result. Um, again, I, did, I ended up doing the slate, and again, you can see that kind of flat mirrored table. It's only because it's wet, but um, it helps pick up the flatness and again this last one this little white I don't know maybe it's quartz or something I don't know uh, but again nice and flat I mean this is the kind of thing I'd like to keep in my pack um, for if I want to sharpen my little neck knife or something like that you know you can hold it however you like and you know you need to be a little bit careful because obviously you know you're coming towards your finger or your thumb but you know, it's a really nice, easy way just of touching up your blade in your field if you haven't got a strop or you don't, you know, you want to take sort of a more natural stone like this. I mean, I could do it on this side, the one I haven't touched, you know, and I, what I'd probably do in that case is take the, the rounded stone and run it along the edge like this rather than trying to run it across a knobbly surface. But where I've now flattened this down, I can sit there, I can put my blade flat, I can line up the bevel, and then just take a sweep across the same way I would with my bench stones. Right then guys, so that probably took me about an hour and a half, and I won't lie, it was some fairly hard, repetitive graft, but it was actually really simple. So as long as you've got like a nice flat diamond stone, or even a flat piece of other stone, all you're doing is the same repetitive motion, putting down a bit of pressure. Um, you know, I found I was switching arms every kind of five minutes or so just to give one a break. Uh, but I really, really like these stones. I mean, this one in particular, I mean, whether it's going to be any good for sharpening is yet to be seen. But this size and shape, I think, will be ideal. You've seen me do it on my little neck knife. Here is the head of my little cold steel trail hawk. And for sharpening something like this in the field, absolutely ideal um, you know it's almost an axe puck in and of itself and again you can use this on larger knives i haven't got one to hand funnily enough but imagine this um this haft is the blade of a machete or a bigger knife rather than trying to kind of do it like you would a stone which is just silly for something this small but what i would do personally especially if i needed to bring it back to full sharpness in the field so i would take my stone and I would run it along the edge like this. Um, I wouldn't be bringing the sharp edge towards me like you normally would in a bench stone. I would just run it along the edge, keeping it nice and flat and level. Um, so I really like this. I mean, these ones probably a little bit bulkier. Um, maybe not this one so much. And again, this one works in very much the same way. It's got that lovely flat edge on it. Um, and a bit like a, a water stone, which is what I'm used to using. Um, you know, this is, you can feel when it's biting in, you can feel when it is right on the very edge of the blade, um, so you can very easily control the sharpening. Um, so as I say guys, I really like these, I'm going to now be constantly on the lookout 
for things this sort of shape and size, different types of stone. And in fact, you can actually see on here where I've done it on the um, on the tomahawk blade. Hopefully, you can see there. You've got microscopic bits of the steel, the same way you would on a good bench stone. So you can see that you're removing microscopic amounts of material, which is great. At least you know it's working. Um, so there you have it. I hope it was useful guys. I hope it's given you something to think about. Um, if you're anything like me and you kind of have a bit of a love affair with the traditional, um, you know, things of the past, you know, ways of doing things, um, then I suspect you'll like the idea of this. And as I say, as long as you've got some kind of um, sort of flat abrasive, whether it's sandpaper, and the sandpaper didn't work as well, I'll be honest. Um, you know, it would have worked eventually, but the diamond stones, just by their nature, obviously removed more material more quickly. Um, so there you have it. Hope it was useful. Comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Cheers, guys.